Welcome back everyone. Uh, here I've got another project here that I've been working on. Um, in some of my prior videos you may have noticed that I have been working on collecting 18650 cells and what I've done is I've finally processed them, capacity tested them, and have assembled everything and got it into a working uh, DIY power wall. And this power wall here is going to have a little over 2,000 kilowatt of capacity. And I'm just using it for emergency backup uh, purposes, really, and to power my ham radio gear um, just as a, a you know, battery backup, just in case grid goes down. Um, or if I needed to run some electronics and stuff, I'll put an inverter on it and we'll be able to power you know TVs such in the house but part of this um, build is the batteries the second part that I've been working on is what they call a uh, BMS or battery management system and what I have here is I have the components assembled and this is called the DIY BMS version 4 and what these cells or these components do is um, it's comprised of a one board with a Wemos uh, D1 Mini on it and this can control the um, the web server and you can view the status of your cells via this and you can also hook up some external relays so if you want to throw switches like turn the whole system down if the voltage gets too high or low this will control it and what happens is you connect them up and then you have these individual cells components and I am going to be running a 7 series um, system and as you can see I've just got them attached to some test cells um, but what these do is they monitor the battery voltage and as you can see here there's a couple with the red lights flashing and what that's doing is if the cells are above a preset level they will come on and there's those big resistors there and it will balance out those cells so they don't become overcharged while the other cells are still charging so this keeps your batteries level in capacity as you're charging because you don't want to get one higher than the other because then you run risk of uh, fire or <laughs> some other catastrophe so so what I want to do is um, there was some questions on how to program these boards and the equipment needed because used to we would we're, a lot of people are used to the Arduino um, type IDE and on this one we use platform IO so what I'm going to do is show you how to program these boards and um, that way if you wanted to build these yourself you can um, they come as just blank boards and you have to solder all the components on so it's uh, they're pretty small but uh, overall it's uh, not too hard of a project to do but anyway let's jump over here and I will show you what to do on the programming all right, so everything that you're going to need um, to get started programming these modules, um, I'm going to kind of go over step by step what you need to do because uh, I am not used to the visual code and the platform I.O. Um, tools. So I just wanted to put out this uh, video just to kind of help others. Uh, some of the things that I came across, some of the struggles that I had, and that way hopefully things will go a little bit quicker for you. So what you're going to do is you want to uh, go to Stuart's page and you want to clone download the DIY BMS version 4. And in here it's going to have everything that you need um, from the bomb files for the, the actual getting the boards printed. And he's even included the list of materials here. Um, I use this. Um, as uh, just a direct download, basically a bill of materials, the bomb for the um, components. Uh, and all you do is take this and it'll you can import it into LCSC website 
and it will come up with all the the various modules uh, components that you need um, there are two modules that are outside of this company that you will have to get and those are for the ESP controller uh, that circuit as well as uh, one of the uh, can't remember off the top of my head which one it is but uh, I'll link uh, those two um, in the description below that you'll have to get from another company uh, I got mine from uh, DigiKey so uh, they had them in stock um, so what you're going to do is you're going to get this uh, you're going to need to get your uh, basically your files uh, your circuits um, printed um, and these everything's in here in the CAD releases um, the Gerber here you can go to the um, there's numerous sites that will do it and they'll allow you to upload your Gerber and this is just a zip file you put it on the site and it'll create everything and basically tell you what you need to order and the quantities um, but so you're gonna get this and you're gonna get it downloaded um, and this is the first step the second step is the actual platform IO and this is the, the basically the development platform and this is where we, what you'll use to compile and upload your code and to do the platform is basically a plug-in for Visual Studio Code um, so the first thing you got to do is you're going to have to download the Visual Studio Code from the Microsoft Web Store and so there's a download link here just click on it follow the prompts do the in, uh, install nothing difficult on that just a normal installation once you get it installed then you're going to open up the plat or the visual code and it's going to come up and it's going to look something similar you know to this and in here you're going to want to go and do extensions and you're going to search for extensions and just search platform and it will pop up and as you can see i've already got it installed but you'll just click on it and click install now this thing will take a little while to install it takes a few minutes and they do recommend closing uh, the visual studio down and starting it back up once it's finished installing and um, so just let everything install and but before you can do anything within here there's one other component that needs to be installed um, and so here um, it's going to require you to get a git uh, client and what you want to do is just search for git and you'll come up to this website it's git-scm.com and it's on the downloads and you want to download this client and make sure your visual code is is terminated you don't have it running install this um, because what happens is visual code will actually use git to update libraries um, so you specify it kind of in the build and the build will go out and look for your libraries and it uses git um, so it's command line type interface but this way it's automatically loaded when you do the compiles so if you don't have this installed when you go to compile your code you'll get errors and it'll tell you to get git before it will compile so let's say now you've got it this downloaded got it installed and you're going to start back up your um, visual code and you're going to get this little icon here with the platform IO and you're going to come up to the home screen and now what you want to do is you just want to import or open a project and what you're going to do is you're going to go to where you have the um, you want to go to where you copied the uh, the zip file and unzipped it I'm trying to remember here you go and and what happens is there's going to be two different ones um, I'm going to start you off with the ESP controller and you'll go in here and the platform IO you're just going to click on that and just do open and it's going to bring those files in 
and I already have it so I'm just going to open it up here so since I've got those already imported I'm going to come up here to the ESP controller and I'm going to go to the platform IO and what this is is basically it tells the system visual code how and it's going to do the flashing of the code to your Wemos, um, the D1 Mini. And on here, it um, shouldn't have to change anything because the platform it's saying is 8266. It's a D1 Mini Pro, Arduino speeds. Um, the only thing you'll need to change is once you plug in your um, Wemos, open up your device manager, see what COM port it is on and you'll want to specify the COM port. Um, everything else should remain the same and here's the libraries and this is where it gets really important to have that Git client installed because it's going to go out and pull these libraries in but there is a problem with this because the uh, NTP client has a time file that conflicts with another library and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you down here if I just do the check mark. Um, it's going to come up and compile and watch it work now. Uh, so it's scanning and what it's doing is pulling in these libraries and compiling the code. And I'm going to slide this up a little bit. Okay. And yes, here's the error. And what's happening is it says get time. It's uh, there's a conflict. So I want to show you this. This is the way to fix it. Stuart um, has put up a pre-compiled version if you want to use it. I don't. I didn't use that. I just went in there and fixed it this way. Um, what you're going to do is in the error um, here, it will tell you the PIO build and it's in these libraries so what I did was I came up here under my documents which which is where I have my code unzipped to ESP controller PIO labs node MCO and then the time and what happens is it says time.h is the problem so I'm just gonna name this old and we're gonna change it close it down and come in here and compile and what that is is there's already another time library in there so for some reason when you get two time libraries in there it throws a fit so there you go everything is is fine now you have your Wemos plugged in um, everything's ready to go all you do is do upload and that's it that is it for doing the Wemos um, uh, pretty pretty straightforward on that. Um, now the next part of it is let's go over to this was the controller. Um, let's go over to the AT Tiny, which is the actual BMS units, and here is the platform I/O. Um, so basically, this is again telling the compiler how it's going to upload everything and push it to the board. Um, Yours is probably looking a little bit different if you imported it. Um, the reason why is on um, Stuart's page, he um, has here, he is using the USB Tiny programmer. Um, they're very inexpensive. You can get them on Amazon. Um, but if you've already got a Arduino Uno, um, you can program it with the Arduino Uno. And it's since I have one, um, I wanted to use it so I didn't have to get another um, uh, piece of equipment. So what I did was, um, if I go in here to the AT Tiny uh, Cell Module ESP Controller Cell Module, and I go to the Platform I/O, as you can see here, it tells you the framework. And the build core is a tiny modern, and a USB ASP is the upload protocol. So um, there was a gentleman on the community site. Um, I told him I was trying to use the Uno, and I couldn't get it to work. I was putting the different protocols in, 
and he gave uh, the line of codes that, that I need for using and pushing this using a UNO. Now one thing to note on the UNO is um, you do want to make sure you do have um, it flashed with the Arduino uh, ISP um, code and the way I do that is you open up just your Arduino and go in here and you go to sketch. Um, hold on a minute. Where's it at? It is examples. And you want to go down here and go to Arduino ISP. And it'll bring this up. And what you're wanting to do is take this and flash it to your Arduino Uno. And what that's going to do is we can put the code on there to basically use it as an interface to do the programming. So you want to make sure you have this done first if you're using a Nuno. If you're doing USB Tiny, you don't have to do this. You can skip it. So let me go back over to Platform. And here, as you can see, we've changed a few thing, things on here. Um, we changed the upload protocol, um, changed some of the flags here, ports, and the speed. And again, you'll have to go into your device manager, see what COM port you're on, and update it as need be. And uh, that way, um, <clears throat> you're getting on the right port and you won't get any port errors. So that is it as far as doing the sketch with the, uh, the cell module. Again, you'll just do the compile. It'll go through a compile. And once it finishes the compile, you'll do the upload. It uh, will flash the, uh, it'll, you'll see the, your blue light indicator on the board that it's doing the programming. And it takes it a few minutes. It'll give you the status updates as it's running across the board and showing you the progress. And once everything's finished, it should be ready to go and be plugged in and tested out. So that is it as far as doing the programming of the modules. And if there's any questions, like I said, leave a comment below. We'll try to answer it. The, the community site over on the uh, Open Energy Monitor, um, there's a link to it um, in here as well. Um, down here, let's see, where is it at? Uh, license problem, how it works. Oh, did he remove the link? Um, there was a link um, if you go back to here and go to the BMS DIY BMS here um, if you go to this site they will um, uh, see let's go to if you go up here and community, and I think it's one of the newer ones. Let's search DIY BMS version 4 there. And here is his page. Um, ask questions here. Uh, these guys are really good. Um, they helped a lot of my questions in here. Um, and if you run into anything, it makes uh, going through it a little bit easier because a lot of people have run into issues and they posted them here as well as um, Stuart's posted some things um, as to ex the extra components like this AT Tiny 841 and this LM4040 um, shunt voltage regulator. Those are the two that you have to get. Um, I got them from Gigaparts. And um, like I said, those are the only two that aren't listed in that original bomb file that LCS, um, LCSC has. Um, but in here, there, there's, like I said, numerous information you can go through. People have shown their projects. Um, and if you have a 3D printer, there's a gentleman in here that has uploaded a stencil for doing your solder paste. Um, I did print these out, and it helps tremendously uh, because you can just take this, slide it over the board, squirt some solder on there, take a 
old credit card or something and squeegee across it, peel it off, and you got the perfect solder laying down on all the pads because these things are really tiny the components, the resistors, and you don't want to get too much solder, you don't want to get too little. So this really helped out a lot and uh, made it a lot easier. Okay, so now that we've got everything programmed up, um, you're going to go ahead and plug in your ESP controller with just a USB um, cable. <clears throat> and what you're going to do is go to a phone or um, tablet, anything with a Wi-Fi connection. And you're going to open up that Wi-Fi connection. And it's, you're going to go and look for a um, open network called DIY BMS. And here's a screenshot or a video that I took from my phone when it first comes up. So what you're going to do is you're going to connect to that um, controller. And you connect to it. And what you're going to do is go in there and specify your um, network uh, SSID and password. Um, so if you look, if you scroll down here, you can see that the gateway is 192.168. 4.2 is the IP address. So what you're going to want to do is go over to a browser and once you've connected that BMS and type in that 192.168.4.2. Um, for some reason it wouldn't come up on my phone so I got a picture of it here of what it looks like and you'll just go and select your SSID, enter your network password and hit OK. Um, then once you have completed that it will reboot and once it's rebooted then you're going to have to go onto your um, router and find the name of or find the actual IP address of the um, BMS controller so once I found mine as you can see here it is the 192.168.86.44 is mine um, so yours, will, of course, will be different depending on your network and the number of available IPs. So once you get that, you should type it in and it should come up to a screen like this. Um, so once you get the screen to come up, um, you should be getting the controllers having difficulty. Um, that, that means what you're seeing here is basically it's uh, my ESP is working, but it's not picking up any of the modules. Um, I unplugged all my modules so that nothing's recording now that's why you have values here but this would be blank um, actually if I probably refresh it it would probably all go away because I disabled it um, so what you're going to do is um, you're going to see as you add each one and to make sure when you connect here's a picture here um, you want to go from the transmit of the ESP controller into the receive of the first module and then the transmit out of that module, you can go back to the ESP. I recommend doing one. Once you get one working and it works fine, then you can start adding the others. And here you can see I've added all seven of mine. I'm going to run a 7S pack. And here you can see um, each one going through the appropriate. Each green light is a flash saying you know that it's communicating. So you should see your green lights. And as you can see, I have one here that's got the red on it. That means that it is in balance mode. Um, it is showing the red light, basically showing you that it's in bypass and it's going through the resistors to burn off some extra voltage. And that way you know that uh, you got one pack or you can tell which packs are charged up and uh, it's trying to balance them out. But anyway, this is a neat little system. Um, it was a great project. I mean, you learn a lot of good on your soldering skills because everything is so tiny. Um, I would highly recommend doing it. it uh, like I said, it was a good challenge. Um, and uh, I can't wait to get it hooked up now to my battery pack and see how it works in operation. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I will include some screenshots here of the boards close up that way you can kind of get an idea uh, of it and I know that there were some questions about the LEDs 
uh, where you, which way they're oriented on the boards. So I'll circle or I'll put a, a green dot to where each surface mount LED, the green dot should be, you know, pointing. Um, Cause on each one, there's a, a green indicator showing you positive and negative. So I'll put a green dot on the picture here and that way you can get an idea of which way they orient because I had mine in backwards, had to go back and, and flip a couple of them around. Um, but overall, everything was good. Make sure you get the, the optocoupler. Um, there is a, a dot on it. Um, so make sure you get that in the correct orientation because I had one turned around and it caused me a fit for a while. So those are just some of the problems that I ran into, um, you know, in the initial beginning, trying to get everything connected. But once I got past all those hurdles, everything seemed to work perfect. So, um, but anyway, uh, have any questions, drop them in the comment section below. I'm going to try to put as many links and tips and tricks in the comment section. And I will, um, try to include uh, as much detail as well um, to where you download all the various software that I've talked about and uh, any of those things, the, the special code that I put in there. But uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button. Hit the bell notification if you want more to get notified when more content comes out. Um, I am going to do another follow-up video once I get everything up and running, hooked to the solar panels and the batteries and the BMS on there. So I will do a follow-up video showing it in operation and how it charges and controls and balances everything. So stay tuned. Um, I don't know when I'll get it up, but uh, I will try to get it up as soon as possible. But anyway, I appreciate you stopping by and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks.